oh, I will never do that because I do understand investments in a black community is a privilege. It's not a, it's, it's a, you are privileged. Mm. To even say you are saving a thousand rand. To say in your savings account you have a thousand rand, <laughs> you are privileged in a black community. And I can never say someone does not have that, mm. that they are wrong. You are lucky that you can save a thousand. Name me one person in South Africa that's ever made it from Forex. <laughs> I'm going to give you a thousand rand. I'm going to send you a thousand rand immediately right now. If you name me one person from pure Forex trading, not selling calls, <laughs> not teaching Forex, not selling signals, not having a WhatsApp group, <laughs> Telegram group, mentorship, <laughs> classes, just pure trading. trading. No, I'm not talking like, okay, we make one good trade well, today. I, and, and I wouldn't want to lie. I want to lie and sell a good story. You are going to lose money in the stock market, especially in the beginning. Mm. And if you get seasonal and you get like in the market solo, you're going to lose money. But do remember, it's all about diversification. I have mentioned so many companies right now, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at the overall portfolio I have, I'm not losing money mm. because I'm diversified. Yes, welcome to another edition of Mindset Profits. This one is a super exciting episode for me personally because, you know, financial literacy is a subject that I'm really passionate about. And every now and then I go on TikTok and I get surprised. But this time, there's this one time I got surprised by the video of this guy popping up and sharing stuff about shares and how to invest in your 20s and i'm thinking oh okay let me listen interesting it's one of those few moments where i say thank you tiktok you understand me you get me <laughs> you brought me the right person <laughs> why are you making me feel special <laughs> I'm sitting with the one and only Ivan Sambo and I've been I've just been telling you man you're changing people's lives and as I said I wish people could change my life <laughs> <laughs> just joking just joking so, uh, it's surprising well I would have said it's surprising you're even saying that because uh, the one thing I walked out to just welcome you and the car that you arrived in and that touched my heart <laughs> I'm not into cars but I saw that and thought oh yes I could do this <laughs> And interesting, you drove from Cape Town. Yeah, I drove from Cape Town to, to Houghton. For context, how long is that drive? It's like, it typically is about to take um, 18 hours, but I typically do it in 24, 26 hours. Because I always stops. stop, I always stop in Bloemfontein. This one city people under mine is <laughs> Bloemfontein. Like I always say to myself, I go to Bloemfontein, I need two hours in that town. Every time I drive past. Doing what? The food. Oh, okay. People undermine Bloemfontein food. You know the best pizza I ever had in my life? Uh, Bloemfontein. Wait, uh, let's give it a shout I forgot out. the name of this. It's an, it's an Italian restaurant owned. It's a family Italian restaurant owned. It's next to the square next to an F&B. Okay. Uh, next to a Toyota Stadium. It's, it's Toyota Stadium this side. There's a road, road. Then there's a complex with an F&B branch. I don't know the name. I forgot the name. But that's the that's best so pizza I, I ever had. Still, I love food there. I, I was loving the fact that I decided, I think it was two, three months ago yeah. when I reached out to you to say, this is the one person I will fly to Cape Town for. <laughs> Book flight tickets, say, and I call, Ivan, I'm, I'm coming to Cape Town. Hey, bro, I'm not in Cape Town. <laughs> I'm, I'm where you're coming bro. from. <laughs> We were like this. <laughs> After the whole investment, because that whole trip was planned and initiated because of you. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Then I thought, I'm ah, so well, sorry, it man. becomes a cool holiday. But then, here you are. I'm sorry, man. Uh, Super grateful that you're here and you made it, man. Ivan talks about investments, talks about shares, talks about savings, and a whole lot of other things, financial literacy, which is our topic. This is why this podcast even exists. So, I'm curious, you're fairly young. How did you get started talking about this? How did you get to this stage? My grandmother. I always say this story, my grandmother. 
I come from a very an investor. No, my grandmother, my grandmother doesn't know nothing about investment. She doesn't know. She doesn't even invest herself. Mm. But she's very strict. Growing up, I never. I don't know. You know those kids in the township that you see them coming from school and leaving from school. Yeah. When you see them, they're always in the yard. Never leaving oh, the yard. Never leaving the yard. That was me. My grandmother would go. My grand. My grandmother used to work for the Department of Human Settlements in Pumalang. Okay. So she will get books, pamphlet, leaflets. Like things from workshop, we're just doing like, like maybe like old mutual will come or whoever it is come to workshop there, give them leaflets. She'll come home, she won't even read them herself. She'll throw them to me. <laughs> so I read that, understand that for me. My grandmother. Oh, oh it was read and understand for me. me. Yeah. <laughs> I love So your that grandma. type of relationship, right? <laughs> My grandmother will man and she will get paid and she'll say, Ivan, here's 200 rand. Go pay electricity. Ivan, he has 50 rand. Go pay this. You do that. And that as well made me aware of how to use money wisely. Uh, how to be aware of how money works. Uh, when she comes back with pamphlets from Old Mutual or whoever it is, I'm reading them. I get to know them. One time she came back with a pamphlet. I remember it was a, it was a leaflet. Mm. It was those when you like when you like this one you just open it like that. Well, they they fold. They fold. They open, yeah, I open yeah. them. It was from the post bank, post oh, okay. office, talking about the retail savings bond. And I read it, read it, and I explained it to her what she wanted. But my grandmother, she's not an educated woman. My grandmother has great three. Mm. She's just a woman that was likely after the end of apartheid, nineteen ninety four, she was working as a she, uh, before nineteen ninety four. She was working as a cleaner for the apartheid government. Mm -hmm. Came nineteen ninety um nineteen ninety four, a new government they wanted to insource a lot of the cleaners to upskill them to get new position in government as well. Oh, she became but one of those. Those people are going to absorb, got upskilled by government. She started as a as a receptionist by the new government of the new South Africa. After mm -hmm. becoming a receptionist, she became something for what she was, but. When I was born and I became aware, she was a messenger driver for the MEC of Human Settlement. Okay. She was the woman I was going to pick up a newspaper for the minister, MEC. Go like she was doing those things. So she wasn't. She, so she was not educated, like formally educated. So a lot of English things I needed to <laughs> read for her, right? And that was a thing. But I couldn't interested about the financial, about the retail savings bond. It was so, I was like, what is this? Keep on reading about the retail savings bond. After the pamphlets, I finished understanding the pamphlets. Went to library at school because I, was, I didn't love playing outside. Really, went to the <laughs> library, you use the internet. I was like, oh, retail savings bond. The retail savings bond opened a lot of things for me. Like, oh, investment this, a bond does that. Like, I got so fascinated. And luckily, Two years after the accident, right? I mm. discovered the savings bond. My grandmother retired from government. Okay. And there's a woman now who's retiring, plus and minus, if including from years of apartheid, almost 30 years okay. of working for government. So the passion fund yeah, is going to be passioning. That, <laughs> that is a heavy retirement fund. Yeah, you see. And she retired and she said, Ivan, I'm going to give you money. So she gave me her money. Like when she retired, you know, she bought me a BigBerry phone or some of the, you know, a BigBerry touch phone, touch screen. Mm. What well, that time of the big bit of screen. Yeah, yeah. She put me that. She put me a laptop, and she gave me a thousand rand cash. And here I am, a child doesn't go out drinking, doesn't do nothing, always home. What the hell do I do with a thousand rand? She I already bought me a phone. Many things that young boys would think about. <laughs> but I think I'm not a kid that's old in the streets. I don't know what to do with a thousand rand. Then my mind clogged like, oh, I had up in a retail savings bond. And I heard you can do invest into it in the post office. So luckily, I stayed in Kanyamazane in Pomalanga. Yeah. By that time, my criminal came at was a Friday. On the Sunday, on the Saturday, I went to my mother's township, which is called Matulu. I went there. And I'm busy with my mom. I was busy going up and down. And I saw the post office. like, oh, I have a thousand rand. And that time, I have a thousand rand cash. Mm. It's not even in the card. It's cash. I saw the post office. I'm like, mom, can you just help me go open a retail savings board at the post office? Mm. My, mom, my mom is always uneducated. My mom is grade 11. Mm. I come, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm a first generation <laughs> student. I'm the first one in my family to get a degree. I'm, I'm, I come first from... First generation, I, a lot I, of things. Yeah, so I come from an uneducated family. My mom was like, what the hell are you talking about? And I said, investment. My mom just, my mom was like, okay, I just want to keep you quiet. I'm <laughs> let's just like, yeah, let's, let's go. go. Yeah, I'll do it. Like, get there. 
We send forms, we deposit the money, I buy my first ever investment, which was mm. a retail savings bond at the post office of Matu. Okay. Ever since then, I have been fascinated because now I will go to the post office and I'll see the money. Oh, Ivan, you made this much. I'm like, oh, yeah. And now every time my grandmother will give me money, I'm like, I'm saving to buy more retail savings bond. Like at that time, I'm also now having a phone, having internet. I'm looking at more investment things. I'm looking at more. Mm. I now discover easy equity. I discover a uh, standard bank uh, um, investment account. And I'm opening them. I'm putting 200 rand on standard bank. I'm putting 50 rand on easy equity. I'm like, I'm fascinated. I, that's how well, I So you're throwing myself. in pockets of small monies there, there, just there. to see how this works, how this because works. Because I was still young. But it's just because I was so fascinated. Just by the retail savings bond. Mm. And it opened my eyes to everything, to crypto, to stocks in the New York stock market. You got into crypto back then? No, I did not, actually. Mm. I did with this platform called, uh, there was this coin called Action Coin. Yeah. I bought Action Coin back in the days. Mm. Because I couldn't afford a Bitcoin. Because I when I got into Bitcoin, I was sitting around, I think it was uh, 25,000. That's still early, considering. But I'm in high school. Later. I'm in oh, high school. Yeah, <laughs> twenty-five thousand right, for a high school student. <laughs> it's a lot of money. But Action Coin, that's where I got in. That's like one coin I got. But three years later, turned up to a scam. Mm. But I made money. That was one of the early people who bought into Action who Coin. In and got out. Before. Yeah, when I got out, I made because there was a time where Action Coin, I was sitting around five thousand rand. Of action coin mm. and i got in with 100 rand oh but when it was falling i sold for 2000 yeah that's some serious but still a lot profit still, from 100 yeah. rand mm. to 2000 still a lot yeah so that's what like but it turned out to be a fake coin like scam yeah and there's been many of those yeah so how did you move from just doing it and experimenting for yourself to social media what made you believe this will be a space I'll do well because, man, besides your content just being good and inspirational, you are doing well. I, I think from doing it for myself to social media, it wasn't purpose. It wasn't planned. I'm not doing it because I love it. I'm doing it because it's a necessity oh. of society. This lack of something I know. Because for me, when I... I remember, I tell you, I was doing investments when mm. I was in high school. I went to university, University of the Western Cape. Mm. Shout out to UWC, by the way. I love our university. <laughs> I went to UWC, got there my first, second year, third year. Never spoke about investment to anyone besides my friends and my close friends. Mm. Now I did content. Um, only when, the show shows I'm lying, well, the first, second year I was quite with my investment. Mm -hmm. That year, that's where I said it's because my friends were like, I think, <clears throat> you know you, you're doing something that no one is doing our age. You owe shares of Sasol. You owe shares of Standard Bank. You owe shares of, uh, I think that time I used to owe shares of, of, of ShopRite as well. Mm. None of our friends do that. Why not you create content about it? It's like, nah, man, I'm not interested. They're like, no, Ivan, like something needed. My friends were like, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. Then one time, I remember someone made a tweet about, I think it was about FNB, mm. about investing in FNB shares. And I was like, you're lying. <laughs> I was like, the, the person put so much of it, was, was, was a huge threat on Twitter. Like, he wrote a whole, like, whole thread. It was getting so much likes, so much tweets, so much reviews. But I was like, I read the financial statements of FNP because I wanted to invest into them. Yeah. What you're saying is wrong. It's lies. So I quoted that tweet and gave the correct information. Mm. And that tweet blew up. I remember I used to have like 3,000 <laughs> or 4,000. Was it 4,000? I don't Which know how many. Which platform were you posting this Twitter. On? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I used to have a lot of followers because I was political. Me, political, I'm so much opinionated. Yeah. Right. So I used to have a lot of followers, one of my political views. So I tweeted about it, like, oh, this guy's lying as the right numbers. It blowed up. I ended up with all plus minus 10 to 12,000 followers. From the one post. One tweet, right? Then people kept on asking more information from that one tweet. And I kept on replying, like, quoting other replies to give me more, more information about other things. And those tweets blowed up. And I keep on replying to more tweets. And those tweets kept blowing up. Oh. And in my mind, I was like, but this is general information. But one thing I realized, what in my environment, 
in my circle of friends, what I think is general information is from the general, the general public is valuable insight. For me, conversation I'm having with my friends, with my mentors, and I'm thinking this is normal information, to the normal South African is so much helpful information. Mm. And that's when I realized there's a necessity for me to continue speaking. There's mm. a necessity for me to speak more about this. There's a necessity. By profession, I'm not in the space. Mm. I have no, I don't always tell people, I am not qualified. There's no qualification yeah. I hold. You say I am not a financial advisor. Seek your financial advisor. Yeah, because you I'm not disclaimer. qualified. Yeah. For, for me, just my general knowledge, my general reading, my general conversation, the people around me. But I've realized the space I'm in, the people I socialize with, the people I talk to in my day-to-day -day basics, there's so much information that the normal South African doesn't understand. There's so much information I can milk from that. I have so much access to so much information that I can milk and give it to the owner of the guy on the street. Mm. And one thing, because for me, I love teaching. I love giving back. That's why I'm in the space I'm in. I understand I can simplify things in a manner no one can. Mm. And I think that's what led me to academic, but that's a topic for another time. Mm. Uh, but that made me to say, okay, because I can simplify things, let me simplify investment. Well, to me, it sounds like purpose, <laughs> even though you said it wasn't. But it's not purpose. <laughs> it, bruh, it sounds well and truly like purpose. And what I'm asking myself is now that you are in this space though what's your opinion around why people don't invest especially our uh, the color of our skin it's not something that is taken seriously for the most part if you are hungry you have no food on the table investment is not your option it's not even a conversation a hungry man Who's trying to see how can I survive today? How can I feed myself today? Not thinking about GSC shares. <laughs> a man that's trying to see how can I feed my kids today? So I was thinking about how can I buy shares of Capitec. A mother who's trying to see how can I get shoes for my kids to go to school? Not thinking about how can I save. People always try to say black people don't take investment serious. I'm like, the circumstances don't allow them to. The circumstances <laughs> I don't. I love your answer, man. It does not. Let's mm. be honest. We can say black people don't take their finances serious. How can they? Mm. If someone will say, no, but they, they can afford to buy a, a, a beer on the weekend. I'm like, a beer? A, a Henneken is 25 rand. <laughs> Shares of Capitec are 1,500 rand. Mm. Two different things. If you want to talk about a black middle class, which is a small number of black people, mm. yes, we can talk about them. But when we talk about average, the majority, the majority, yeah. majority of them are on social grants. It's 450 rand. Share of Sasso, it's 150 rand per share. That's mm. half social grant. Mm. How to Before them? you cover the bills and stuff that you have to... So how can you tell that? So for me, I always say, we can never talk about investment while talking about how to create income. Mm. We can never talk about how black people don't save while talking about how black people can earn. We can never talk about how black people don't buy shares uh, and, and, until you talk about how black people can own land. Mm. Can I never talk about how black people like I know I speak up about investment more than I speak up about how to earn. It's because I even know myself, the audience I'm speaking to mm -hmm. are those people who have the privilege to invest. That's the that's the target people I'm speaking to. Mm. But on average, on general, I'll never advocate for investment. I'll go to the township and say, hey guys, let's invest with shares. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to Vusi in the township who doesn't have a job, who's struggling to get two rand to buy a cigarette. <laughs> like what's the sense like what's the sense so for you if we're talking to the majority that we're then classifying as they are too desperate covering bills to start investing. investing what should change for them learning how to end is the priority it's the priority securing fighting for jobs that's why even outside of content i'm a huge advocate even my profession I work, I enjoy every time I do a job. It's a job that advocates for social justice. It's a job that we advocate for people having job, having houses, having running water, having to go to school, afford basic things, right? Mm. That's the thing I'm trying to advocate for. That's the thing I want for our people. So until I get to a position where I can do that, I won't care about the rest. But I do know at the same time, there are black people that can afford to do that. There are some 
middle class people can afford to do that. So I would speak to them about mm-hmm. investment. I would help them because I know as well, I'm also now middle class, I'm, I'm putting quotation points, mm-hmm. because middle class, black you middle class, you will fall it. the next day. I know that there are some of us that have that privilege who are advantage enough, privileged enough that we can able to afford what we can afford and we can invest. And mm-hmm. I know, let me speak to them. Let me help them to invest so they can take care of those coming after them. Mm-hmm. They can take care back home. They can be able to secure their future, secure for their kids. Let me speak to them. But when we talk about the black, when you say black people, for me, I'm thinking average. Mm-hmm. I will never shame them. I will never use my privilege the position i'm in to speak ill about them not investing to speak ill about them not saving to speak ill about them not even buying crypto oh i will never do that because i do understand investments in a black community is a privilege it's not a it's it's a you are privileged mm. to even say you are saving a thousand rand to say in your savings account you have a thousand <laughs> rand you are privileged in a black community and i can never say Someone does not have that, mm. that they are wrong. You are lucky that you can save a thousand. Thank you that you're putting it that way. I want to speak to, there's two types of people. Yeah. Some who truly, this is a privilege to even be able to save. Mm. There's another category. It's a trend that I've come to see lately where people get to their 50s. I was having a coaching session yeah. with a group of individuals that were just past 50 so we got to talk about money and this thing of financial regrets came up and one of the big regrets they were having in the room i guess you'd classify them as the the middle, middle or black maybe middle close to middle less than yeah. middle but no no let's just use, let's use the term sub- black middle class because <laughs> i always say there's difference between the middle class and the black middle class <laughs> okay yeah so it's the black middle yeah. so they were in that category the, one of the big regrets they were having was not having used their income well. When they look back, they realized, look, the salary I had, if I were carefully using it, I could have invested. I could have taken out 500 rands a month. I could have taken out 1,000. I could have without changing a lot, but I didn't. So as you have to say to those people that, I think for me, it is... They could invest, they just don't know what the options are or why it's important. And it's knowledge that they don't take the initiative to look for until you are out of time and you realize, yo, Ishail, I am at a later stage in my life and starting now seems like yes. One thing first, don't have shame for what you've done. Beautiful. Don't have shame. Um... I, I'm in a space where I interact with a lot of elderly people that want to start. I'm in a space where I hear stories from people at the age of my mother, age of my grandma, age of my father. And I hear their stories. And I'm lucky enough that they're at the stage where they are talking about decision they made at the age where I'm in. Mm. So now I have two perspectives. And one perspective I have is that I'm on the stage where they were, right? The mistake they were making, they were at my age. And they were the first one in their family to be educated, to have a job, to be and above 10,000 rand. And I'm in the same stage where I'm the first one in my family to be at that level. And one thing I'm seeing, besides the education I've, I've earned, is that there's ignorance. And you can't shame someone for ignorance. Because you grow up poor, when you earn money, what you think of is to access the luxury you never had access to. And that's what they did. Mm-hmm. Obviously now, because luxury was tangible things that for that moment, looking back at the years of exploits they have, they regret using their money to access the luxury. But the second at that stage, call upon them mm-hmm. to access the luxury they never have access to. So they cannot be ashamed of doing that. They should be proud of doing that. That's number one. I always tell people. <laughs> be, be proud. Be proud you of access the luxury <laughs> that a lot of our forefathers never had access to. Okay. You ate at a restaurant. Then it was spare, spare ranch or it was McDonald's or it was Wimpy. Our grandfather never had access to that. You did. It may not be wealth. It may never be investment as you ate at McDonald's. Mm. 
but it was experience that now you have that inform how you treat your kids. Your kid mm. now see McDonald's in everyday day. But yeah. for you, it was luxury. Your kids see Wimpy as... So I always tell them, be grateful for that. Secondly, it's never too late. It's never too late. Start now. You now have years of experience. You know what to avoid. Now you have the wisdom and the context that you never had before. Start now. Mm. Whether it's a life policy. Take out the life policy. You don't have a life policy. Mm-hmm. You are in your 40s. Take out your life policy. That's security for your kids. Because mm-hmm. when you die, the life policy will do more than must True. Take out a life policy. Mm. Take up a home insurance. Mm. Take up a, 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 a what called hospital plan. Mm-hmm. See, start there. Before even thinking about buying shares, start up with those things. Start mm-hmm. there. No, no, Come honestly, the start basics, there. The foundation. The, the basics. Life policy, funeral plan, I mean, uh, hospital. Life, uh, hospital plan, um, home insurance. Mm. Secure for your kids. You die, no one is coming after your house. Your kids have a home. They don't start from scratch. They have a house they call that belongs to them when they have a title they do. Mm-hmm. Even if you're still paying with a bond, you know your life policy will come in and cover the bond. At least you're leaving some you're leaving something for your kids that your parents never left for you. Start there. That's like that's I always say. Don't like I mean, there was a lady that came to me and was like, no, I'm definitely investing. And I asked her, Do you have a funeral cover? It's like, yeah, even my I'm like, do you have a life insurance? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, what car do you drive? She's like, I'm driving a polo. Like a polo what? Oh, a polo vivo. I was like, oh, I'm driving a polo vivo. Um, is it is it is it fully paid off or money like money installments? And I'm like, so if what happened, you die now. If you die now, you you can, your kids can't afford to keep on paying the monthly installments. That polo vivo is gone. Mm. Why ask me about buying shares of capital when you have a life policy? Why ask me about buying shares of Capital Bank? Well, you don't have a, li- a, 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 a medical, I mean, a, a hospital plan. Mm. So for me, I always say to people that stage of their life, obviously you, you have lost time, but now this the bare minimum you can do. And after you've done the bare minimum, you can go on now and say, okay, let me look into shares. You can still buy those shares. Never know. Capital Bank 2005 was 25 rand per share. Now it's 1,400 rand per share. Mm. You can now buy one share of Standard Bank. You never know when you pass or you go to your retirement age what price that Standard Bank shares will be. Mm. So for now, just buy at one share, at two share, three, five, whatever you can afford, just buy them. I love the passion that you have. Yo, I, I haven't met someone who's that passionate <laughs> about black people. Yeah, actually, I have. But yo, what you are having is deep. And I'm thinking, have you encountered people that are giving bad advice now because i imagine if someone sees you doing so well on social media the following growing there's many that will come and share the same things some will probably even copy you and just recreate your video but have you seen people that go out and put out disinformation around investments yeah misleading there is this a systematic thing there's a systematic Thing of putting bad information about finance. Because I want to hear your warnings to people. Be careful of one, two, three. Like, okay, before we get to that, when it comes to misinformation about finance, it's systematic. Mm. It's built in a manner where finance companies, finance institution, financial advisors use misinformation to just sell products. Mm-hmm. It's, it's every day. Scams exist everywhere. Some of them are even legalized, like medical aid. <laughs> They're legalized. <laughs> yeah, guys, I have medical aid, but I know it's a scam. <laughs> I just have to pick which scam works for you. So it's like that. So I see that everything. But for me, I always say one thing. Decentralized investing. Decentralized finances. Always go for any financial institution that will give the power to pick yourself. That will give the power to research for yourself. That will give the power to do it yourself. Never be, never go with any institution that they, you give the power to pick to them. The second you lose the control of your finances, the second you know it's a scam. Mm. The second you know it's misinformation. The second you know you put your money there, save 16 years later, you only get the initial amount you've put in for those years. 
until you go to platforms that's why i love platforms where it's decentralized where they say here's the options pick what you choose and mm-hmm. pick at your own risk so i always say that i'm not saying to to, to, to to discredit financial advisors i've worked with beautiful financial advisors some of them for example i saw i have some of i can pull their names out but some will work for all my child some will work for uh, momentum some will work for these companies but we speak with them and they will recommend products outside of their commission base i want to look for medical aid oh uh bonitas has good that. one or mutual is a good one or discover is a good one they don't even any commission there i have met some there's some good ones mm. out there but they are rare so for me if there's obviously for myself there's some copycats who try to copy my content and all of that uh there are a lot out there but if for me if you copy my content and reproduce it the same way i am reproducing it and the right information some there's someone on on, on facebook that i post the video she watched it and she always reproduced it word for word bar for bar yo like honestly i'm not lying she does that every single time i, re- I release a video on tiktok she goes to <laughs> facebook she record the same video word for word bar for bar but i have never shamed her because she's not lying the information she reproduces she's not lying unless i make a you mistake. never reached out and say uh, oh, sisters why she's earning she's getting a lot of views she's making money she's putting the right information much she's copying my information but she's putting the right one don't you think though, at some learning? stage for for your brain it becomes people don't get to know who started with this i don't I, it becomes I, you are copying her now for me personally as i said in the beginning i'm not here for the um this is a side hustle for me you take away all my i can like, if i can get blocked every in all my platforms life I'm, goes I'm, on for life, you life is normal for me I have my nine to five job. It's a stay in my everyday life. I can still pay my bills. So content is not the be all for me. As I said, for me, it's I'm obligated because of a necessity. So she can steal it, but I only get problems when now she partners with brands I would never partner with. Mm. I get mad where she will take some of my content and partner with a brand. that i know pushes misinformation that's where i get mad mm. that's where i get furious that's where i feel like i should report her or i can send because i have more numbers than her mm. send my people to go report her page mm. but at the same time i'm like there's a reason why she's doing this guys she's she's trying to end because i know if someone does content out of passion out of love they're not going to copy someone Let me let's be honest. Tell me one content creator that's big, mm. truly big. Let's enjoy what it's called. That's creative. That's copying someone. Tell me one. Yeah, now I get where you're coming from. So it's for her is a necessity of survival. So why must I take it away? She's not hurting anyone. The only time mm. I get mad is when she do the brand deals, and I feel I should one day just. DM her and like oh you could DM her and talk uh, on the side and say it's, it's okay this one is okay but, but be careful the brand deals that's where i get mad but it's not too much not too much all right so i'm curious of your thought around one thing that young people love so much forex trading oh no talk to the wrong person <laughs> there <laughs> talk to the wrong person <laughs> there I, i have to so it it triggered me at some point because I was doing talks around universities doing entrepreneurship challenges and every time we would be talking about side hustles and how you kids are earning while you're still in school forex kept coming up as I was I changing you? university to university can I catch you yeah. there and ask one question yeah. i know you're the interview you're not supposed to interview me i'm not supposed to interview you <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you a question name me one person in south africa that's ever made it from forex <laughs> I, I'm gonna give you a thousand rand. I'm gonna send you a thousand rand immediately right now. If you name me one person from pure forex trading, not selling calls, not teaching forex, not selling signals, not having a WhatsApp group, Telegram group, mentorship classes, just pure trading. trading. 
No, I'm not talking like okay, we make one good trade. Well, today. I, I can answer. I'm you talking about one good. I good don't know the ones that the names that would have come up like five years or so ago are all running away from people. <laughs> <laughs> So I have no one to name anymore. <laughs> Let me tell you about Forex. Forex Forex is not a scam. Forex is a legit system that works. Mm. Forex, you can make it. But it's a gamble. It's like people who are professional gamblers. There's some people who are professional gamblers and they make good money. Same with Forex. You must be you must be a pro gambler. In forex to make good money mm. so there are people who are pro gamblers and they make good money in forex but they are not in south africa they're not doing forex on their cell phone they're not doing forex on their laptop those people have a whole building with screens bots ai traders mm. with accountants financial bankers sitting there and those people who call them banks and those are the people who are winning with forex <laughs> have you ever been to standard bank office here in the cbd go no, to your forex division oh yeah by the way banks all all banks do have the division those are the people making money if you go to forex you're trading on a forex on your phone you're 15 seconds behind you're 15 minutes behind <laughs> the actual trade because your broker must talk to a middleman talk to another middleman talk to another in- interval that interval must go talk to the actual stock i mean our forex market <laughs> you're 15 minutes behind standard bank has a whole three floors that's on forex tell me you can beat standard bank <laughs> standard bank hires accountant general accountant bankers professional analysts to f- focus on forex and you think you're making it on your phone you can beat them on your phone mm. using x whatever nonsense a signal you're being sold a signal on your whatsapp group that you only see a notification 20 minutes late and you can beat them? Let's be <laughs> honest. Why, why is even someone selling you a signal? Let's start there. Why is someone even selling you a signal? Hustling. Why is even someone selling a course? Why are the candle Bibles for available for free on YouTube? Mm. On Google? The candle Bible. The only, let's be honest. What more? If you read the candle Bible that you can download on, on Google for free. For free, yeah. What more do you need to understand about Forex? Because mm. all the information is there. And the Candle Bible is the most simplest thing to I've read it, bro. I'm sure yourself you've read it. I saw it. I, I never bothered because when I doubled around Forex, that was years ago. I made money, lost it so fast. I thought, nah, it this needs, is never going to needs, be a system for me. Because Forex is a profession. It's not a side hustle. It's a profession. It was for me at the time and I didn't know what I was doing. It's hey, bro. I think why the I, trauma I, of how fast I lost the money <laughs> <laughs> was enough to say stay away from this, bro. <laughs> Ask yourself why the hell do bankers hire people who come from university to work on their forex division? <laughs> and you think when I work at twelve, <laughs> let's be honest. What the hell is um, uh, 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 the big banks? Start a chartered accountant. Yeah. Um, you, you name them. Mm. Why the hell are they hiring? So people are so educated with degrees and masters and courses and regulation and licensing to work in the forex division. If someone with metric can go do it, mm. it means someone with metric cannot do it. <laughs> Let's be honest, guys. Yeah, forex. I'm not disputing the forex industry. If you spend your time. You get educated, you take courses, you go read the Kindle Bible, you get skilled, you get, like you spend time to educate yourself over the industry. You mm. can make it. I'm looking at him. He looks like he's going to look for it. <laughs> so <he> download, <laughs> <laughs> download my friend, download it. Uh, <laughs> now, like if you spend time and you educate yourself, I'm talking about, I'm not saying because I'm talking about attending this master classes of this Forex pros. I'm talking about actually understanding the financial institution itself. The financial mm. institution itself. Because Forex, what is Forex? Mm. That's a good first ask yourself, what the hell is Forex? What I'm makes like the a... what makes the price of currency move? What influenced that? Mm. That means that you must understand economics. Yeah, you must understand the financial market. You must understand the investment market. You must understand um 
all that comes with it. And you're not gonna stand it just by And for many it's just guesswork. I feel like the sun will go up. Feeling. <laughs> Feeling. I <laughs> boo. Uh, uh. let's talk about investments in general yeah. because that's one topic that you're really passionate about what mistakes do you see first time investors making someone at my age or younger who would be saying okay I want to get started with this what are some of the popular mistakes that they make listening to Ivan ah <laughs> Honestly, Heck no, Heck no, I mean, no. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I'm honest. I mean, honest. Listen to me. Yeah. Um, I always tell people this. The some, like, so for example, I share a tweet and I bought shares of PPC Cement. And another tweet was screenshot of people saying, Hey, I also just bought it, just bought it myself. Why? Mm, Why? Making decisions because you listen to one content creator. Why? I just said, I bought it myself. I didn't say go buy it. Why? Do you even know what PPC Cement is doing? Do you know their structuring? Do you know how they are working? So what I'm 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 go, I'm going to is that investing for the popularity of it. That's the biggest mistake. People see me saying I bought shares of Capitec Bank. Now they want to buy shares of Capitec Bank. They don't have a goal for Capitec Bank. They don't know how the finance of Capitec Bank mm. are doing. So basically, lack of wanting to research, lack of wanting to get informed mm. lack of going to do the actual work yourself see like first time investor don't want to sit with themselves and say what is my investment goal and i'm saying when i want to say what is your investment goal i'm saying what are you investing for mm-hmm. ask yourself that question you can't say I'm investing for my kids no that's not the answer people will say no i'm investing Can for my kids for, but there will it's be not it's says... not it's not it's never the answer mm-hmm. because the answer was saying investing for my kids when they turn 18 at what specific time oh, to be able to invest in their I education get you. I get you. you have a full answer a detailed answer so that you know when you are going to buy shares of capital bank you when you're not going to you want to go to go buy shares you want to invest for shares. let's say for example you ask me Let's say I have a kid right now, right? It's five yeah. years old. Say so I've been one investor. I'm investing with my kid, and when he turns eighteen in the next sixteen years, I can be able to take him to university. So that means when I'm going to invest, I want to invest to companies that I think will survive and be profitable in the next sixteen years. Because my mm. end goal is for my kid, who's two years old now, when he turns eighteen and go to university, I have money for him. Because you're not day trading and moving these things no. every day. So you want to put money... Because remember, the only person who, in history, if you look at all the numbers, you go to all biggest investors. The one person who always makes money, the biggest money, the person who always stays the longest in that investment. How many million has Capitec inv- created mm. since 2005? Yeah, the numbers got staggering. Capitec, yeah, was good for people. Discovery. Mm. Telecom, when they first listed. Mm. Sasol. People saw a vision there and stayed for the minimum of 15 years, some 10 years. Mm. So you see, that's when I'm saying, have an end goal, have a reason why you are there. And when you do your research, don't say because now I have the privilege, for example, let's say you have a new job and I have the privilege of saying I have the money now and say I want to invest now. I always say, rather tell man, go buy yourself a Hennessy and drink it Mm. and enjoy a Friday. (laughs) Wake up on Saturday, spend time, research the next week, research, research until you're comfortable to say, I'm happy with this company, and you start with it. Obviously, you, when you as you be invest, you gonna start to become more aware, more knowledgeable. You say, Okay, this company was a mistake, and you will sell it. You will, oh, yes, you will, and that's mm-hmm. okay. You will sell it and move to the next best one mm. and see which one is better because the more you invest, the more you are in the stock market, the more you get knowledgeable, the more you get to understand better mm. because now you are mm. so much interested in your investments that you start going there and there and there and there and there. That will happen. Cool. But take your time to understand yourself. What's your end goal? Mm. For me, five years ago, my end goal was buy a car. Like I always told people who were following me from the beginning, I want a car, guys. Mm. I want a car. And my first car was, was a Toyota Agio. And I bought it through saving. But I wasn't happy with it. Mm. And I remember this year, because of the year, I was like, guys, I'm not happy with this car. I was talking to myself, I was talking to myself and my fiance. I asked my fiance, babes, I love my car. 
but I'm not happy with it. it does not bring me joy. Okay. And my life was like, what's your plan? I was like, but I saved so much for this car. But I was like, your saving was the only thing. Want your investment as well? I was like, yeah, but I'm a content creator. I must always have investments. I must always have crypto. But it was like, what was your goal for investing? I was like, so it's a car. It's like, yes, yeah, sell your investment and buy that car. <laughs> Because you're beginning your your, your your main focus at the beginning of your investment to buy a car. So sell your investment. And I had to say, actually, that's true. That's why this year I sold my whole my whole portfolio of crypto is gone. Okay. I have no crypto. It's gone. And that's sold how the it. nice ride happened. <laughs> that's how the beautiful car is outside hey, happened. Well, nah. Because I had to. And because I know, because I had to go back myself as well. And remember, that's, that's the reason I started investing. I was like, I want one day to drive a beautiful car. Now I have a new goal. After I did that, like, okay, I achieved this. Now I have to set a new goal. And now I have a new goal. Now I'm investment for a new goal. That I have set for myself. And I must be comfortable in the next few years when I reach that goal as well. To be comfortable to sell. And I think as well, like we know, it's not, it's not, it's not about the, the one who are starting. Yeah. But people are still in the market. They don't want to leave the market. Oh. I know a lot of those. That have been investing for so long, they don't want to leave. They got obsessed about the idea of investment. They never want to leave. And it was getting to that point as well for me as well. Ah, I think so that I think as well, <clears throat> investment is knowing the other to extreme. Leave. It's knowing when to leave. Knowing when to leave. Because there is a story, actually, I was talking about this in one of the books that a guy called Ronald Reed mm. in America it's a story that's popular it talks up it talked about a lot when we are teaching people about saving and investment long term this guy was a janitor yeah but he worked he lived alone for the most part mm. by the time he died he donated in his will over eight million to a library and i, and I was about to say a similar story but as far as i know about that millions <laughs> bro. but he lived poor to school the libraries and people are thinking, what? Not this guy that grew up in front. He lived poor. That's the thing. That's the other extreme, I guess, which is what you're talking about. You invest so long, you don't get out, but you don't... You don't enjoy your money. What's yeah. the purpose? Investment is not only about just saving for the next generation. It's also part of you. Enjoy your money. You work hard for it. Like the cheese, you work hard for your money. Like for me... When I sold my crypto portfolio, I took so long to build it. I had Binance, I had Yellowcard, I have Vela, I had uh, Luno. I had so many platforms using crypto for. And I remember this friend of mine called Soul. Um, me and Soul used to talk, like, whenever we were together, we were drinking. We talk about crypto. We talk about which, which, which coin was we buy today. Mm. It, was my, it, was, it was our joy. I love crypto. Mm. But I had to make confident, like, I also need to enjoy my money. You also need to enjoy. What's the use? Like, I don't have kids now. Why, am I, why must I save for people I'm not sure I'm even going to give birth to? Mm. Yes, obviously, it's important to save for your kids. But now I don't have any. I want to enjoy my life. Like I, So you're talking balance. Balance the two. Balance mm. the two. Like, know for yourself. Even if you're a parent. I know some parents who always prioritize their kids. That they become angry towards their kids. They start hating their kids. Because they're not living life. They don't they are not enjoying life themselves because they fall so much on their kids for, for the, the kids. kids. That they become start hating their own kids. Oh yeah. Especially when you sacrifice almost most of your life and when the child grows up, leaves and never takes care of your it's bec because the kid never asks you. Let's be honest, the kid never <laughs> asks you. You decided that yourself. You decided to prioritize the kid over anything, over your own personal life, over your own social life. Because you never balanced. The same thing with investment. Mm. Yes, save for your kids. But so invest guess, for yourself as well. Mm. I guess we're saying it's, it's important to take care of the child. Do your best. Just always take care of yourself in the process as well. Why do we have abusive parents? Mm. Why do we have kids that don't want to talk to their parents today? It's because parents feel entitled to their kids. But they've gave so much. Mm. The same thing with the investment. You end up hating life. You end up hating yourself. But you have millions in your bank account. You have millions in your mm. investment. So that's the thing about the other extreme of those who have started and those who are now starting, they don't have a goal. 
And I think also at the same time goes back to the extreme as well, the ad. Those who don't know when to leave the market. Mm. But they also have never had a goal. Mm. They don't know why they were investing for. What was the purpose of your investment? Obviously, your investment was to die and not money go into your life, but okay, cool, you have achieved your purpose. For those one, sharp. If that <laughs> if, was his goal. If that was his goal. <laughs> yeah, sharp, you have achieved it. <laughs> We're happy for you. But some is they never had a goal, so they didn't know what to do with the money. It's like some grandmothers. I know back home in the township, there was a grandmother that passed away and they found um, 195,000 in, in under the wardrobe. Yo! And the kids were poor. <laughs> it's just so... We were struggling all along. This money was right Coco, here. Coco rich. <laughs> Coco rich. So that's the thing I'm saying. Yes, like, are, you know, I get you. I get just you. have a purpose. I start with a purpose, number one. Start with a purpose. Have a purpose. Know what you're investing for. Number two, have self-discipline. So you will make mistake. You will lose discipline. But always try. Mm. That's the important point. You will lose discipline. Now people don't. Like people always say just have discipline. And I forgot to say that you will lose discipline. Mm. Myself, I've been I've been investing for so long, but I still lose discipline. Have you experienced loss, like a big loss in investment? Yeah. And how did you feel? How did you deal with that? This one that's still hurting me, still hitting me. There's a company. Those who, <laughs> those who know Purple Group. <laughs> <laughs> those who know Purple Group in the chase, that cry, we're crying together. <laughs> those who know PPC Cement, we're crying together. <laughs> Those who know City Launch, we're crying together. Uh, those who know... Um, Curry, it's a series of losses. Um, which other company have I made, that made me cry? Mm. Cry. Oh, Pick and Pay, we're <laughs> crying together. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, when you go to Crypto Coins, those who know Codona, we're crying together. Uh, when you go to the New York Stock Market, those who know... Um, What's the one of those company? I forget this company. I have it in my phone. Um, nah, you can check it. It's all good. <laughs> uh, give me a second. <laughs> uh, what's, 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 give me a second. Why is my phone paid low now? Um, where's this thing now? It's all good. You Netflix, know. Spotify. Those are not those shares. We're crying together. Um, which other company? It was Neo. 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 Neo, Neo Car. We're crying together. You lost money on Netflix. Oh yeah, there was the yeah. No, I last know many year. people who made we cried that last year. We lost last year. Mm. We lost last year. I'm still in the recovery stage. <laughs> yeah. I haven't sold. I haven't sold, but we're still crying. Spotify. Uh, Spotify yeah. is doing good this year, yeah. but we still haven't recovered the loss we made. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's Ooh, a lot. So you've been so, hit quite a couple of times. There's a lot, man. Uh, PPC Cement. I put so much. PPC Cement. Doesn't it? Get discouraging though for someone who wants to invest in stocks and shares and bonds when they it hear does. an experienced person like you it say does. I've been it, hit so many times. It does. And and and, and I won't want to lie. I want to lie and sell a good story. You're going to lose money in the stock market, especially in the beginning. Mm. And when you get seasonal and you get like in the market so long, you're going to lose money. But do remember, it's all about diversification. I have mentioned so many companies right now, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at the overall portfolio I have, I'm not losing money mm. because I'm diversified. I have Netflix. So you'll have 10 companies lose, but 30 others that are winning. Yeah, you see, I will have PPC Cement making a loss in the GSE for me, and I have Exaro that's doing good for me. I have Discover that's doing good for me. I have Standard Bank that's doing good for me. I, like, I, I will make losses on um, People Group, right? And I plan on making huge money there on uh, uh, Afrimat. Mm. So there will be losses. You will cry because you'll see 5,000 rand gone. You'll see 25,000 rand gone. You'll see 6,000 rand gone. You'll see um, $100 gone. You'll see it. You'll cry. That's money that you'll use back home for your families. <laughs> like there's a time when I was looking at my shares for a purple group. And I was like, that's money I could have used to finish my mother's house. I was legit looking at that money. I was like, that's money I would have used <laughs> to buy windows and roofing for my mother. Like legit. I would finish my mother's house with that money. Mm. But you leave and learn. You will make mistakes. You leave and learn. You, But you need to be diversified. 
you need to ensure that you are in different markets. You need to ensure you're in different locations, different sectors. You can't just say, say I'm buying banks. In your, I'm investing in the South African market only. I'm investing in the JC only. You need to be in the New York stock market. You need to be in the Australian market. I hate the Australian market. Actually, I'm not. <clears throat> but some, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's a better Pref- example. Personal preference. Yeah, personal preference. I hate Australian market. But you need to be in the UK, New York stock market. You need to be in the UK market. You need to be in the European market. You need to be all over. But not too much all over. Because now you need to ensure you control your portfolio. Right, mm-hmm. so you need to ensure that you're in those markets in different sectors. So you sectors. are diversifying products, you're diversifying markets, you're diversifying countries. Yeah, and also diversifying currencies. Oh, diversifying currencies. Yeah, that's a cool one. I think that's a neat way to bring it together. That's that's pretty cool. When you look at what are you most proud of, though? When you look at just your journey with all the investment, the oh, losses, investment the wise. wins. The wins, the losses, and the content that you've created. I think my pride, your life at this stage. I think my pride of thing is sadly it's not something that people know public. Mm. But my pride of joy is like I walk on campus. Because for those who don't know, I used to lecture at the University of the Western Cape, right? Mm-hmm. I will walk on campus and I'll see students and I'll say, You are my teacher. And I'm like, What? Like, yeah, you teach me finance. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, maybe I forgot the face of my students. Maybe I forgot your name. But the fact that they're saying I'm their teacher because of finance. And mm. that's so proud for me. And I think as well that I'm so proud about that content allowed me the ability to give. Mm. I'm not talking about give about the people watch my content and get informed. I'm talking about the amount of students we feed from money we make from brand deals. Whoa. I'm talking about the amount of student competition we sponsor in the University of the Western Cape. We sponsor essay writing competition for the Black Blood Association. Mm. We sponsor football tournaments. We, we ensure we buy food. And not mine is coming from my salary. It's mine that comes from brand deals I do because of content. Mm. That's the proudest thing I've been able to do. That I know there's a student that has food because someone decided to watch a YouTube video of mine. Someone decided mm. to watch a TikTok video of mine. Someone decided to follow me. Someone decided to share my video. And a brand noticed me and he gave me 5,000 rand. And I can be I was able to feed a student. And I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud that there's, there's a competition named after my work at the University of Western Cape because of the contribution I've done. And I could have done it because of my actual 9 to 5 job. Mm. I could have only been done it because of the extra income that comes from people just enjoying the work I do. And I'm so grateful for that and I appreciate that. I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud that my name lives on in that university. And I know now I'm here in Houghton for the next few mm. few months and I left UWC but the impact I was able to do I know if I had a normal 9 to 5 job I couldn't be able to do that but because of content I was able to I know you, might, you wanted me to give an answer around investment but sadly I can't <laughs> um, I love this one better <laughs> sadly I can't because there's more like for me content has opened so much door to give yeah. it's opened so much door to See the power of what people have if you are, uh, enable them. This year we did an essay writing competition, right? Mm. And people always say black kids can read, black kids can write, black kids can articulate themselves. We got over 60 essays and the kids can write, bro. Mm. Students can write, they can articulate themselves. I know I was just only giving a thousand rand, but the way they wrote, they are built to articulate themselves. And we need that. We need, especially for us. And you're building belief in these kids. We they need walk to out that. with a different mindset. We need to do that. I said, I think that's the pride. But when we go to finance, the biggest pride for me is the JSA market. <laughs> People undermine the power of that bloody straight there. <laughs> like the JSA market, it has potential. I'm proud of how many black people for the past five years, if you look at the numbers, have started investing. And I don't want to 
pop my own horn, hook my own horn. But I think 2% of those black people think because of me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, but, but I'm thinking 2% of the black people in the chasing market now is because of me. Because the numbers, if you look, like look from, look from 2019 mm. to now, the past five years, the amount of retail, no, not institutional, other institutional is fully white, but retail black people. I I like to think I have something to do. I like to boost my ego by saying, nah, one or two percent there <laughs> is me. me. It's me. I suppose I come from a home, I come from a household where I said my mom's only educated, my family was educated. They never had the privilege to understand education, they never had the privilege to understand a lot of things. And not because of their failure of not wanting to learn. It's because government was not giving it to them. So for mm. me now, it's like, let me use any measures possible to give to others. I know I can't go take my mother. My mother's now what? 50 or 49? Mm. 49 or 50 something. I think since late four, four, late 40s or early 50s. That mm. woman is old. Uh, <laughs> but I know now you can't take it and just put it to school like again. Hey, no, you can't. But there is a child from Gokuletu that deserves to go to school. There's a and child from help. Orlando that deserves to go to school. Speaking of, speaking of, I've seen a lot of young kids that have a following on social media and have no idea what to do with it. Do you have advice for them? Commercialize it. How? How do you, how, what's the first there move? Are two they do? Let me just, there's three things, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people in South Africa, the second you get a following, they hate it when you commercialize it. Mm. Ignore those people. They're not going to pay your bills. The way to make money with your following commercialize it focus mm. on taking your brand from what it was that gave you numbers mm -hmm. sorry and shift it's it all good and shift it to the way that aligns to brands and still try to keep originality but try to align your content with brand mm. because brands are those who are giving the money people like uh there's this girl called Ch 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 uh um something j uh chasing mashaba Jessica okay. Mashaba. That's a case study people should learn. How she went from just dancing and just being uh, crazy on TikTok. She did a whole 360 turn and started being brand focused. Right? Okay. I so don't know you, actually. Jessica? Jessica Mashaba. I'll look uh, it up. I, I'm, her content is so... It won't be your type of content. Mm -hmm. But if you go down... No, just for the case study. Yeah, it, like, just, just study her. Look at when she started and the content was creating. And when she noticed, okay, I have numbers now. Let me take that 10 and ensure my content now is brand focused. No longer casting, but still being able to be aggressive. Because she's still aggressive. She still goes after people, right? Same as this other one called, I forgot her name. She's a transgendered woman. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that thing. She does. Please don't come after me. Um, <laughs> but I know she's transgender and people have to come after her for that. Mm. And she goes after those people. But she does not go too far. She goes in a manner that even brands will like it. Mm. Understand? So if you have the number, you have the following as a young person, try to find a way to still keep your originality but be brand focused. Try to keep your originality but be oriented on commercializing your brand. So that even if you're not only just... And I use those two terms with purpose, brand focus and commercialization. Mm. with purpose so you can be able to depend and can be and work with brands and be able to commercialize and create products for yourself mm. and sell something for yourself maybe because you're doing hair products you always talk about how to make my hair better now you start creating your own hair products mm. always make makeup mm, like content you. now you can create your own makeup brand so i always like just do that and deadly deadly the most important thing don't read too much into content into the comment section. Let's stay away from the comment <laughs> section. Like, people always, people think because I do financial education content, I don't get hate. You just, sometimes just, even yourself, spend time, just go through on the comment section and read the vowel thing that comes there. Is it? If you stay I, there. Well, when I check your content, I don't go to the comments. I just people listen. People vowel things. Stay away from that. Do you remember one bad thing someone has said to you? I remember someone said you can invest because your parents are rich. And you're here talking to us as black people thinking we can do the same. <laughs> and that hurt me so hard because 
<laughs> you know where you're coming from. But it was so painful to see like someone think of that. And for me, I thought, and, and I was reading that comment, I was like, I remember the time I was doing my final year, I was like, maybe, maybe I have become too comfortable in the world that I speak in a tone that ignores the li- the lived experience of our people. Oh, you started judging yourself yeah, because of so it. Yeah, it's so hard. I was like, maybe I now getting this brand deals as now starting to show off money in the way I speak. Or maybe I am flashing wild in the people. Maybe I should tone down. Like, I judging my whole content. I didn't release. And that's the time where I stopped even doing YouTube videos. I stopped for a year. <laughs> Not even a year. Yeah, a year. Yeah. No, I started for two years. Well, I only came back this year. It was two. Mm. No. So it's three. Joe, one comment. I stopped for a long time because I only came back this year. When, when was the last time I recorded a video? Wait, let me double check. No, we'll check. But are you saying one comment took you out for that long or it was a couple of them? I think that there was a couple of them, but that one was the most breaking one. That was the one that made me stop YouTube. But also it was a YouTube comment. Joe. And remember that, that was the time I was recording YouTube on my rest room. I was recording YouTube at Res paid by Nasfas. <laughs> I'm recording a YouTube video at the rest room paid by Nasfas. And and maybe maybe I thought maybe because the way my room is decorated, maybe people think there's an apartment or something. I it took, I stopped doing YouTube. Because of that, I stopped. But you fell. I only this year I'm re- rebuilding my YouTube. And remember that time I just got fifteen thousand followers, mm. and I stopped. Obviously, over those two year periods, started getting followers. But people are watching my old videos. It mm. built itself up. Yeah, but only this year I started rebuilding. Started going back. What got you back? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know what made me come back. Actually, I don't know. I just, but I continued Facebook. Was I don't know a lot of people hate Facebook, but I continued doing Facebook videos. Facebook, I love it, man. I don't know why people say Facebook people are rude. Facebook, you're the most honest people, man. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten hate on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. There's only so- one platform that I'm scared of. It's Twitter. I'll, yeah, I know. I nah, Twitter, 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 I go there already. I have a shield on. <laughs> when I go to Twitter, I already, I already put my, 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 my bulletproof vest. I'm protected. I'm ready there. Like, let's go. Let's go. Let's say I go to Twitter. You know, let's go. But YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, I ne- you're I not expecting, expecting it. that. And it comes from those platforms you don't expect. But that's where you always get the most love. And when you get a the hate there, it hit different. So I'm also not, I'm saying like it took me a while. Only this year I'm going back to YouTube. And I went back to YouTube this year. Mm. So it's, you are human. You are emotional. You, I know people say men don't feel emotion. Dude. We, uh, we feel emotion. We feel hate. We feel all of those things. And it's painful. Especially when someone says something that also makes you reflect on your character. And that makes you think maybe I'm doing something that makes me think I'm better than my people. Because I'm, fo- I, 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 I'm pro black. I yeah, I felt that heavy right off the bat. I'm pro black, and so when someone questions the blackness of me, questions my integrity and how to the black community, it hits most harder than someone saying any mean word. It hits more harder. And I think for me, it hit it more harder. And you will get those comments. Mm. And if you don't feel like anyone and whatever they're doing, the second someone insults your pure principle trust me will hit more hard than someone calling your name someone sharing rumors about you mm. when someone comes from your core principle that you hold dear it will hit it will hit i think as we keep it off um now that you're back yeah what should we look at, what should you look forward to uh i think i was talking to your producer before you came in that i want to do more content that talking about finance in the most simplest way and the most fun way possible. <laughs> I want to get financial content creators, uh, financial investors, bankers in a room similar to this. Yeah. Put a cooler box with wine and beer <laughs> and say, let's talk about finance. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that's my plan. Don't you ever fear though that uh, it, the conversation might make sense when it starts? It doesn't matter. But later. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm a cheater. When is the, yeah. when, when, when is the term? I'm a, when is the time? I'm a cheater. I'm more honest. 
Let's be honest. What's the time? I'm not, a to I'm more honest. Do not trap me. <laughs> you know, every Sunday I when we're there, the car wash getting drunk. <laughs> that's the only time we're only honest as much. So that's why the concept. I want, I want, and I want to do it every Friday. I funny, put, funny you say that. Do you know what I'm thinking of? The biggest podcast episode in the world right now mm. this year. Actually, uh, club Shay Shay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! I think, I think there was. <laughs> you see, you see! That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I want people to get drunk to <laughs> expose themselves or make themselves vulnerable, but I just want to talk about finance in a fun manner. And for me, I'm someone, those who follow me on Instagram and Twitter, they know I love wine and I love beer. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. And that's my passion, right? So mm. I want to integrate those two. I integrate finance and that drinking and having fun and just socializing. Because I'm tired of talking about finances in the most uptight manner. I, I was invited to the money seminar in Santin, the, the Santin's whatever, because that's yeah, the yeah. square, a convention center. And people are so uptight, man. I'm like, can people relax? <laughs> I know we're talking about money, but relax, man. Relax. You're going like, through it already. Take so. out the blazer. Mm. Relax. Be comfortable. We're talking to a human being about money. What is money? Money is the exchange of human energy. Just be honest. Mm. That's what money is. Money we're exchanging as human. It's a form of language. It's a form of interaction. So when I'm looking forward to this. I am looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can talk a long, long time. I want to see. I want to see. <laughs> Hey, maybe put something here. <laughs> <laughs> that looks very trusting. There you, you are safe. Thank you for hanging with us till this time. And I know Ivan is someone that you will have enjoyed. Check his YouTube channel. Check him out on other platforms. I think I, I saw you on TikTok. I've seen you on YouTube. I haven't checked the other platforms. Your name was consistent on the two platforms. Everywhere. So everywhere you are. Same name. Even on X. Everywhere. Hear it yourself. I know you found this valuable. Believe me, the channel itself goes way deeper than we did today. But thank you for hanging with us till this time. From our side, see you on the next episode. We have a series of financial advisors coming and there's a lot to look forward to there. We will not be using these disclaimers. Eh, this is not financial <laughs> advice. Nah, there we will not. We'll go all the way technical. So, Cheers.